Uh, so greetings to everyone around the world. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity for, uh, for having uh, my talk. Uh, so I will be talking, I'm Sonal Shreya from Aarhus University. And uh, today I will be talking about multifunctional spintronic devices uh, for neuromorphic computing. So uh, the overall uh, content will be uh, divided in these like introduction, then challenges and solutions, then spin device, and then how we can have multifunctionality with these devices. And then, uh, and then shortly, I will discuss about uh, the device modeling and then summary and impact. So to begin with, I will just uh, shortly introduce myself. So uh, although uh, my presentation for this conference was selected as postdoctoral researcher, but currently I'm working because I have recently joined as a tenure track assistant professor at Aarhus University. And uh, these are a brief background about me. And I am also associated with some of the academic roles, for example, with the IEEE Women in uh, Magnetism, IEEE CAS in Denmark, Women in Engineering, and then some other roles. And these are my research areas. Uh, so um, the uh, the problem that we are uh, the problem is uh, uh, of escalating data, and uh, that uh, we are looking forward to uh, to solve this problem somehow. So as uh, currently we are in 2023, and by 2025 it is expected to uh, increase the data by 175 zettabyte, uh, according to the recent uh, recent study. And with this increasing amount of data, fueling amount of data, we have we are also increasing the um, AI uh, and uh, IoT devices. And all these devices also needs the parallel processing more secure and data privacy. And then um, we want to uh, 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 process the data at the same time for real time uh, processing and edged, uh, edged applications. So uh, when we look at the current electronic system, uh, which consists of several blocks and it all are separately uh, placed, for example, power management unit, communication block, uh, storage unit, processing unit. And if we, our aim is to look uh, in the future towards a connected digital world, then where we want to process the data, store the data, and sometimes communicate, sense the data at the same time, then it is not possible that uh, uh, through this current electronic system, uh, we are able to achieve that. And uh, specifically, if I talk about the memory devices, then uh, if we talk about the conventional memory devices, which are mainly SRAM, DRAM, and flash memories, then due to several limitations, these memory devices are not capable enough to, uh, to cope up with these challenges uh, because of their power consumption in portable and, uh, and data center is the real issue due to the high leakage power, large footprint area, CMOS scaling, and specifically if we talk about the on-chip memory, then volatility, non uh, low density, high cost. And if you talk about off-chip memory, so although these are non-volatile and high density, but uh, a very high access time. So there are several emerging technologies on which researchers are working from past one decade or more uh, to solve these issues and bring the parallel processing uh, uh, approach and functional and multifunctional uh, um, system. Uh, so few of them are like resistive RAM, phase change memory, paraelectric RAM, and photonic, and there are many more. Uh, but today I'm going to focus on mainly on spintronics. So when we talk about spintronics, so it is somehow very close to the conventional charge-based electronics because instead of the uh, degree of freedom of electrons and and absence of electron that is uh, that is holes we look more into the another degree of freedom, which is uh, the uh, the orientation of spin, that is up spin or down spin, and then based on that we can also so also uh, store the information, process the information, and the beauty of these uh, devices are that we can switch the direction of magnetic moment from one direction to another direction. So uh, some of the main features of spintronic devices are non volatility, zero leakage, uh, low voltage scalability, then the Best feature is compatibility with CMOS technology. Then it comes with several classifications and brings multi uh, multidisciplinary approach. So now I will be discussing about multifunctional attributes of these spintronic devices. So although there are several more uh, attributes, but I will be mainly discussing uh, like uh, in brief about each of the multifunctional approach that uh, I have worked closely with. 
So for example, first and foremost, and of course, this is where it all started, is the storing of information that is magnetic memory, MRAM, magnetic random access memory. So it can be either two terminal, which is uh, commonly known as STT, and three terminal as OT. So we know that it mainly comprises of magnetic tunnel junction, where one of the layer is fixed, where the magnetization is fixed in one direction, while there is another free layer separated by a spacer whose magnetic moment we can switch. So uh, we can also bring it towards uh, the multi-storage functionality, where instead of one bit, we can go for two bit, three bit, and four bit, uh, which will also help in analog uh, storage. So uh, there, uh, I'm, uh, uh, here I'm showing two bit storage, which can be either in this parallel schematic or in series schematic. And this type of uh, uh, devices with the parallel nano pillars placed uh, at a distance apart on uh, heavy metal is already now being fabricated by many uh, uh, many uh, many process uh, developers and uh, also uh, we can store uh, the two bit information in four states but the challenge is that uh, when we want to store the uh, these uh, four states then due to the low tmr sometimes it is difficult to uh, to distinguish between uh, two similar uh, bits so it uh, it is even more when we go for three bit or four bit uh, but i'm sure that in near future we will have more flexibility and then uh, this also uh, give a rise to the uh, this attribute of having compute in memory or processing in memory approach so so where uh, the the, uh, the main uh, target is to uh, reduce the uh, time and energy consumption, uh, where uh, considering the inherent property of spin devices, that is to uh, the hysteresis through which we can store the information. So if we somehow electrically and mathematically, we can tweak the uh, our design implementation in a way that uh, uh, by the uh, by monitoring or, or uh, managing or manipulating the uh, heavy metal current and uh, the MTJ current and its resistances, bias voltage, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, make it function as the uh, uh, as the logic gates, for example, here uh, with this uh, uh, these mathematical models, then we can have uh, the basic uh, logic gate implementations. And here it shows the transient analysis of AND and OR gate. Then it has another very beautiful feature of uh, of uh, the having uh, of generating frequencies, microwave uh, range of frequencies. So although there are precessional STT as uh, STNO that is a spin transfer torque uh, nano oscillators, a spin hall nano oscillators, but I will be uh, discussing about vortex spin torque nano oscillators. So um, uh, today in session five, uh, Diana already mentioned about uh, vortex. So this is a uh, this is a magnetic texture which is uh, formed uh, due to the magnetic uh, moment orientation of the uh, of the, uh, the um, on the free layer, and then a ma magnetic vortex is formed, uh, which uh, attains a trajectory, and then it can uh, we can measure the frequency of the uh, device, and uh, this way we can uh, have the oscillation in the device, and then we can measure the frequency and the output power accordingly. And then uh, the reverse mechanism is uh, to detect uh, to uh, convert the RF signal into DC. So if we have the incoming RF signal, then uh, by mixing this signal with the magnetos, uh, magneto resistance signal uh, present in the uh, MTJ, then we can have the uh, DC output voltage. Uh, then uh, using these features of uh, memory and the communication that is uh, generating the frequency, then we also come up with this concept of memory and communication in logic, that if we have a ma magnetic tunnel junction device, then if we can switch it between memory and communication where we can store the information that is in terms of frequency as bit zero and bit one, then we can bring it to communication mode. And then at the receiver end, wirelessly, we can transmit the data where we can uh, finally, uh, with some uh, CMOS interfacing circuits, we can detect the frequency uh, that uh, um, uh, and uh, that uh, with either it is F1 or F2 in terms of bit zero and bit one. Uh, and then uh, considering all these kind of uh, multi-attribute uh, functionality, uh, then we can uh, go for a neuromorphic computing system and uh, we want to develop the brain-like uh, system. So uh, where we want to em uh, emulate the functionality of synapse and neurons uh, that 
uh, that is commonly known as artificial neural network. So on circuit level implementation, we want a synaptic crossbar array, which is connected to the output neurons. So uh, this is one of the example of eight bit synaptic crossbar array with uh, two neurons. And uh, uh, then we can uh, finally um, do some applications, for example, handwritten digital recognition. And recently, we are also working on developing a reservoir computing system using the grains present in the free layer of the Votex sample so that uh, we can uh, use these, uh, uh, these grains uh, where the Votex core will be trapped at, uh, in different grains. And uh, these are the energy landscape. And then uh, monitoring the output frequency and the, the resistance, then we can do uh, several uh, applications of uh, reservoir computing. So uh, first we have to bring it into the vortex state, then we measure the natural frequency of the vortex core. Then uh, the two main features of reservoir computing that is having non-linearity, uh, which in this case we are monitoring through the resistance and the uh, and the oscillatory frequency, and then uh, another feature is of having short term memory that where we can use the relaxation uh, property, and then we uh, as a demonstration we did uh, the waveform classification. So uh, just quickly, I will discuss about device modeling. So device modeling is important for, uh, to bridge the gap between process developers and IC designers. So uh, we can do uh, uh, the Verilog A-based compact modeling where uh, we can uh, have the input parameters of the device. And then uh, we can go for either two approaches of magnetic dynamics, LLGS for switching property and scale equation for uh, obtaining the position and velocity. And then uh, uh, by doing the several steps of modeling, like uh, mapping it with electrical uh, equivalent circuit, then bit cell uh, level design, then solving the bunch of uh, physics-based uh, mathematical equations, then we can go for the analysis of the um, device. Uh, so if I would like to summarize the device, then our main focus or goal is to develop the brain-like system or multifunctional AI for which uh, these are the stepping stone. So we uh, have, uh, we look towards the device perspective, then we also do the device modeling so that we can, it can give us an advantage of uh, going for integrated uh, spintronic uh, circuit design uh, where we want to integrate it with CMOS and other emerging technologies. Then currently we are, uh, I can say that mainly we are at this fabric stage and then uh, we can go for several SOC system on chip level design. Uh, so these are the uh, small spintronic, uh, uh, this is the small spintronic group at uh, Aarhus University. So if you're uh, excited about this work then you can reach out to us uh, to join our uh, group and uh, uh, lead us to reach our goal that is to develop the brain system. And also, I will quickly uh, mention about the uh, the, um, the activities of uh, women in engineering. Uh, sorry, women in magnetism committee. That uh, soon we are coming with uh, the emerging leadership program in November. So please uh, be in touch with the, uh, any of the committee member or uh, or um, keep uh, keep visiting the website. And uh, uh, this is my time. Thank you so much. You can reach out to me through my email or uh, through LinkedIn. Thank you very much, Sonal, for this very complete and detailed uh, presentation. Uh, we have uh, time for uh, one quick question. So if someone would like to ask. OK, Gavi, I see. Diana. OK, first, Gavi, then Diana, if they are fast. <laughs> OK, can you hear me? Yes. yes. OK, good. Thank you very much, Sonal, for your talk. It was very comprehensive. Um, many subjects you 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 talked about but i'd like to focus a little bit on the heads of our computing that i mentioned so basically the idea is that you have the disk and you have the vortex and you have the pinning right yes usually yes. parts of our computing you have to restart to always have the same initial configuration yes How do you achieve this with the vortex having so many so much pinning yeah, it was actually, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, the nice question. And it was really very challenging because uh, as you said that, yes, uh, for Vortex Core, it is a bit complicated because uh, we have to look for this relaxation time. So uh, when we were mainly dealing with uh, the waveform classification, uh, then yes, initially we started with uh, that, uh, suppose if we are giving our waveforms, then uh, we also give some delay time so that it can relax and then 
uh, but yeah, slowly and potential. Then we are already in the process of developing more robust, and our paper is already under review. So we are uh, we are trying to make it as perfect as possible. But yes, it is very challenging. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Diana. Uh, you are muted, Diana. Yes, I tried to help Diana. Okay, now, now, now it's done, now it's done. It was a bit confusing here. So first of all, thank you very much, Sonal. It was very interesting. It seemed like a, a, a huge challenge, so many different things. Um, yeah, yeah I, I was wondering a bit on, uh, maybe uh, out of curiosity, you saw these yes. uh, very nice uh, single element uh, uh, vortex uh, spin, uh, spintronic nano oscillators, but uh, if, if I remember well, sometimes you really need some arrays of these structures yes. for uh, yes. these systems to work. And, you know, there are several issues with that. Could you just give uh, give me a bit of your perspective on it? How do you see in all of these complex systems, uh, um, this point could help you or hinder you? Yeah, thank you so much, Tiana, for your question. Uh, yeah, uh, mm, that's right that uh, uh, like uh, mm, from past two years, I'm mainly closely working with Vortex and the uh, one most beautiful feature about uh, Vortex nano oscillators, which when compared to other oscillators is that it has very high output power. So it is always easier to detect uh, when we want to read out the, uh, the signal from uh, CMOS uh, interfacing uh, circuits. Uh, so uh, for array, yes, it is, uh, uh, it is our vision because we want to uh, ultimately develop the whole neuromorphic uh, system where we want to use these vortex oscillators as neurons. Uh, but yeah, currently we are struggling with the synaptic crossbar array that for synapse, synapses, what, what is the best way to go forward? That should we use the magnetic memory and one bit or two bit? Uh, so uh, recently uh, our partners, INL, they have also published their paper in communication engineering with uh, where they have uh, develop this uh, concept of MMs, that is magnetic memory. So uh, these are uh, like stack of memory and then uh, that, that we want to use it as synapse and then using the vortex as, uh, as um, neurons. And then uh, let's see how it goes. No, that, that, that's, that was very clear. Thank you. 